everyone. Today I have a total body circuit workout for you that'll take you just about 15 minutes to complete. We're gonna use an interval structure of 30 seconds on, 10 seconds of rest, and we're gonna stay on one exercise at a time. So for exercise one, you'll do 30 seconds on, 10 seconds rest, four rounds of that. We'll rest 30 seconds, and then we'll do the same thing with exercise number two. In total, there are five exercises. This is the same structure that one of my favorite studios in Boston uses for their Train 360 classes, so shout out to everybody fights, I am copying you. <laughs> As for equipment, you're gonna need a set of medium dumbbells. Medium is gonna mean something different for everyone. I would start with a set somewhere between eight and maybe even up to 15 pounds. Personally, I'm gonna use a set of 10 pound dumbbells, and I'm also gonna have a heavier set of 12 pound dumbbells on hand for one of the moves. Um, so if you want some options, maybe grab two. In addition, for one of the exercises, you are going to need a pair of sliders. Um, I'll link to the ones I'm using, but dish towels work as well. And if you don't have sliders on hand, or maybe you're working out on a surface that doesn't really allow for good sliding, uh, you can do regular mountain climbers instead. Uh, I'll explain it when we get to the move. As with all workouts, you wanna make sure that you are properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed. I have a couple warm-ups on my channel that I will link to below. Before each exercise, I'm gonna give you a preview of it and I'll show you how to modify it for lower impact options. So when you're resting during those 30 seconds in between each exercise, just watch the screen because I'll be showing you what's coming next. If you're new to my channel, I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever music you like. So you might wanna get a playlist or a TV show queued up. And if that is all squared away, let's get to the workout. Okay, we got push press jumping jacks coming up first. So this is a cardio exercise, but the addition of the weight, we will burn out those shoulders as well. When you jump your feet out, that is when you either push the weight in front of you at chest height or overhead. So it's like a shoulder press and a chest press. Jumping those feet in and out. 30 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. We're doing this four times through. Now, when you do the press in front of your chest, make sure that you are truly pressing it at chest height. You don't want to angle down at your belly button, um, and you want to make sure that you're not shrugging your shoulders up to the ears either. So think about kind of relaxing the neck. 10 seconds here to rest. Round two coming up at the beeps. Catch your breath. And let's go. Now, when you're jacking your feet in and out, I want your glutes to be active, which might sound weird, uh, but if you're not active through the glutes, what's gonna happen is your knees are gonna kinda cave inward. So I want you to think of sort of spiraling your thighs outward, squeezing your seat as you do these jacks. If these get to be too much, you have options. You can always ditch the weight, or you can step those feet instead of jumping them. And rest, okay, two more times through that. Thirty seconds on the clock. Let's go. Now, your core needs to be really active when you do these, especially since we are adding in that upper body with that weight. So I want you to think of kind of knitting your ribs together. We don't want to dump into the low back and tilt our pelvic bone forward. So low abs, draw up and in, squeeze the seat. Your glutes are part of your core, and we are pumping that weight forward and up. A few more seconds to go here. Woo, rest. Okay, we got to do that one more time. Final 30 seconds of this exercise. Let's go. So I don't know about you guys, but I find the chest press to be a lot more challenging than the overhead press because we're extending that weight out far from our center of gravity. If it's getting to be too much or form is getting sloppy, just do the shoulder press for me. So just press it overhead. Um, it'll be a little easier, but you'll still get that upper body burn. We have 10 seconds to go. Could you pick up the pace at all right through till you hear those beeps? Let's go. Woo, okay, you get a full 30 seconds to recover while I show you the next exercise and how to modify it. So 
So we're gonna squat in that low squat. You're gonna step to a back lunge and do a shoulder press. You step back to the low squat and then you stand. So a little bit of compound movement here. Now you'll notice I'm doing the shoulder press on the same side of the target leg. So the foot that is staying forward when I go into that back lunge, that's the side I'm doing that explosive shoulder press on. If that feels unnatural to you, it really doesn't matter. It's fine to do the opposite arm instead. Just make sure you're isolating the same side the entire 30 seconds. So it is a fluid movement. As I step back into that low lunge, I'm doing the shoulder press at the same time and rest. Okay, now we're just gonna switch sides. So put the weight in your other hand. Other leg will be the focus. So squat down, explosive shoulder press into that low lunge, step back to your squat and then stand. When you're moving between that low squat and that back lunge, weight is staying in that front heel. Core is active, so knit those ribs together when you do that shoulder press. I don't want you puffing out through the rib cage and arching into your low back. And rest. All right, halfway there. Switch back to the first side, so weight goes onto the other side. Squat to low lunge, squat to stand. So you're staying low through the legs when you move from the back lunge to the squat. We're going to increase that burn that way through the lower body. When you stand, I want you to squeeze the seat and bring your hips forward, core in tight. So when you're standing at the top of this, it's like you're in a vertical plank, abs in tight, glute squeezing. Rest 10 seconds here. Okay, one more time, switch sides. Weight into the other hand. Now I want you to move quickly through this, okay? So not so quick that form gets sloppy, but I want continuous movement and really challenge yourself. How many reps can you get in? You want that heart rate to get up. If that shoulder press feels easy peasy, you are not using a heavy enough weight. Maybe next time you try this workout, you try swapping for a heavier dumbbell. Final few seconds here. Can you get in one or two more reps? and rest. Okay, you have 30 seconds. I'm going to show you the next exercise and how to modify. Okay, skier swing. So this is just like a kettlebell swing, except we have dumbbells, one in each hand. You might need to go up a little heavier for these uh, versus the weight we, you were using in the previous exercises. Now, a swing is not a squat. It is a hip hinge, okay? So notice, yes, there is a soft bend to my knees, but it's my hips going back that are creating the movement. Squeeze your seat at the top. Think of coming into a vertical plank, so abs in tight, squeeze your bum, and then hinge forward. My neck is staying in line with the rest of my spine, so my gaze is kind of at the floor, then up ahead of me. 10 seconds to rest. So this is cardio. This is hamstrings and glutes. This is core. Let's go, 30 seconds. Remember, initiate the movement by sending your hips back, so your butt goes back, torso hinges forward, long spine. Now, if when you come forward, the weights are swinging all the way up overhead, you're not using heavy enough weights, um, your arms aren't really pulling the weights. It's the force of your hips thrusting forward that is creating the pendulum movement. Weight in your heels as those hips hinge back. 10 seconds to rest. All right, twice more through that. Roll those shoulders down your back so that you have a broad chest. We don't want to hunch through the shoulders. And let's go, 30 seconds. Now, if you are newer to swings, then just do that hip hinge that I demoed before this set. You would hold the weight either at your chest or kind of at your shoulders behind your neck, and you would just practice that hinge forward with the torso and driving the hips forward as you bring your torso upright. Last few seconds. 
and rest. Okay, we got to do that one more time. That heart rate should be way up there by now. Final 30 seconds of these swings. Let's go. So as you start to tire, we sort of get lazy, and this is when it can turn into a squat or when we can forget to engage through the core. So when your hips come forward at the top of this, you shouldn't be hyperextending through the low back. You need to think of drawing your navel to your spine. Again, I, I've said this before, but vertical plank. So you're squeezing your butt, but also squeezing your abs. Final few seconds. Don't bail. You're almost at the beeps. And 30 seconds to recover. I will show you our fourth exercise. For these wax on, wax off mountain climbers, um, we're going to be making a circular motion, sliding the foot across and around the weight that's in the center, kind of under your hips. Um, so kind of a wax on, wax off motion here. If you don't have sliders, just give me regular mountain climbers. These are deceptively hard. What makes them so challenging is you really got to pull your knee up towards your chest in order to get it around the weight. So you're forcing yourself to do a bigger crunch. When we get lazy in regular mountain climbers, we really only bring our knee under our hips. This is forcing you to bring that knee under your chest. You're going to feel a big crunch. And rest. Make sure to really get off your shoulders for the rest period. So give me a nice shoulder roll. Come back to your feet. All right, and then we'll make our way back into that plank position. Let's go one foot at a time, goes in and across and around. So as you do these, make sure you're not piking your butt up to the ceiling. So if you look at me, my hips are staying right around shoulder height. I'm also not rocking my shoulders forward. So notice my shoulders are staying right over my wrists. Ten seconds to rest. Now, if you have tight hips and this is really hard for you to do, elevate your hands. You can use a chair or a bench. It's going to give you more space to drive that knee up. Now, I, your goal is to move continuously through the 30 seconds. Yes, I want you to go as fast as you can, um, but don't rush these because what I care most about is how far you're getting your knee, okay? We're really driving the knee up towards our chest, almost in between our arms and around. So I'd rather you go a little slower and focus on range of motion here. Rest, we got one more to do. Shake out those shoulders if you need. And let's find our way back in that plank position last time. Wax on, wax off. You know, I've actually never seen the Karate Kid, which I should not uh, admit to, but I feel like it's a classic. But we got that motion going, okay? Circular, up and around with one foot, up and around with the other. Knit your ribs together, shoulders stacked over wrists, hips staying at shoulder height. As you drive that knee up, think of drawing the navel towards the spine. Final few seconds. and 30 seconds to rest. We have one final exercise to get through. I'm gonna show you that and how to modify.
basically a burpee variation, have your weight standing up on its end, and you might be able to use a heavier one for this one. From your plank position, you're going to hop your knees in under your hips into a bare plank position, then you're going to hop back to the plank, and then you hop your feet wide to the outside of your hands, and landing in that low squat, you grab your weight and give me a weighted squat hop. When you do that squat hop, chest is lifted and broad, core in tight, weight is in your heels, button hips down and back. You don't have to get very far off the ground, okay? Just a little hop and place that weight back down. 10 seconds to rest. Doing that three more times and then you're done with this workout. We are so close to the end. 30 seconds, let's go. Little weighted squat hop, hands to the floor, hop to plank, bear plank, plank, low squat. Now I showed you tons of ways to modify this one. If you're not comfortable doing a weighted squat hop, don't use the weight for it, okay? Just do body weight. Or maybe instead of hopping, you just stand with the weight. And rest. Okay, round three coming up. When you do the bear plank, uh, try to keep your hips pretty much at shoulder height. So when you land in that bear plank, knees right under hips, shoulders and hips at same height, and that way you're gonna feel the burn in the quads in the top of the thigh area. A few more seconds to go here. Could you pick up the pace at all? Try to get in one more rep. 10 seconds to rest. Okay, you have one final 30 second push and then your workout is over. So we are going to give this our all. I'm just going to start where I left off. So I'm going to start with the squat hop, but it does not matter. If you have tight hips and hopping the feet to the outside of your hands in that low squat isn't happening, use a chair or a bench to elevate your hands and don't even worry about the weight. It's going to help. So it's not just a matter of making it easier. Um, it's going to help with mobility if you have a limited range of motion. Final five seconds. Try to get in one more rep. Let's go. And done. Shake it out. That is your workout. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, you know the drill. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel while we're at it. Why don't you follow me on Instagram too, at Nicole Pierce. I'll see you next week with another workout.